from New York, where the American stage begins, NBC presents Best Plays, transcribed with John Chapman. Best Plays, a series of our length dramas selected from the outstanding successes of the New York stage. Now, John Chapman, drama critic of the New York Daily News, is here to introduce Wendell Corey and James Westerfield in Detective Story by Sidney Kingsley. <laughs> Mr. Chapman. The oldest and the wisest piece of advice in the writing business is this. An author should concern himself with something he knows about. But that does not mean that the author should hold himself down to past experience and knowledge already acquired. One playwright who is not afraid of tackling a new subject is Sidney Kingsley, the author of our best play, Detective Story. Kingsley spent more than a year with the police of New York, learning and listening before he started putting his play down on paper. This is one reason why Detective Story is an uncommonly good drama. Its author knew what he was writing about and whom he was writing about. The other reason for Detective Story being a best play is that Sidney Kingsley is one of our best playwrights. For our performance now, we have Wendell Corey and James Westerfield as the two plainclothes men who are most concerned in exciting events. Our setting is, obviously, a drab, dingy, but efficient station house. First Squad Detectives Callahan. Yes, madam. What's your name? Address? Okay, miss. Phone number? Yes, sir. Plaza 33598. Have you got a list of the missing items? Help, yes. Any cash? Oh, you do? One of the servants, eh? Okay, lady, we'll send a detective over right away. Yes, madam. Oh, Mitch, got a squeal for you here, west side. 21st Squad Detectives, Callahan. Oh, hi, you, Lieutenant. Okay. Come on, back here. Nah, quiet back night. Here. Just some shoplifter Dakis picked up. McLeod hasn't come in yet. He went out on a burglary squeal about an hour ago. No, no, Brody's out, too. Yeah. Okay, so long. Uh, Callahan, what was the price on that purse this kid listed? Uh, six bucks. <laughs> Times I spent twice as much for a pocketbook. Well, you took it. I don't know why. I was crazy. It's your first offense. You'll get probation. Come on, let's get printed. Oh, sister. Oh, sister. Come in, come in, Mrs. Farris. People still bothering oh, you. Oh, worse than ever. I want to speak to you, young man. Mrs. Farragut, I got 12 men on duty night and day guarding you. But whose side are they really on? One of them is my own brother. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. Only it's so important. They have a man watching me from the top of the Empire State Building with radar. We've got that man covered, too. It's all under control, Mrs. Barrett. And I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to double the men I've got watching you. Twenty-five men, night and day. Now, I... Oh, much better. Thank you, officer. Thank you. You sure do a good hand job, Callahan. Oh, 90% uh, salesmanship. All right, girlie, just sit down on that bench there and wait. Yes, sir. Quiet night, huh, Callahan? Nick, we're right for a good homicide. Well, I hope it waits till I get off duty. Oh, here comes something. Yes, sir? Uh, my name is Sims, Endicott Sims. I'm an attorney. Uh, what can we do for you, Counselor? I represent Mr. Kurt Schneider. Your office has a warrant out for him. Oh, that's McLeod's case. Where's Schneider? He's ready to surrender himself. Fine, bring him in. Uh, first, I have some photographs. He had these taken half an hour ago. Oh, naked. Ugly, ain't he? He's no Mr. America, I'll admit, but the purpose is not aesthetic. I don't want any rubber hoses used on my client. We don't assault our prisoners. I've heard about this man, McLeod, who's handling the case. A law unto himself, they tell me. So I'd like you to tell <clears throat> Mr. McLeod... Tell him yourself, to... Counselor. He's coming in now. Hello, Jim. Hello, Callahan. Okay, Buster, sit down over there. Can we get this over with? All in good time, Buster. Callahan, I want this kid booked on a robbery charge. There's a uh, counselor here to see you, Jim. Detective McLeod, Mr. Sim. How do you do? He's uh, here for Kurt Schneider, Jim. Kurt Schneider is a successful truck farmer from New Jersey. With illegal operations for a sideline. I got a real yen to see your client, Sims. I'm aware of that. Take a look at these pictures, McLeod. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, there's no doubt from these photos that the process of evolution is reversing itself. You'll observe that there are no scars or lacerations of any kind on his body. This is how I want him back. I should think that any changes whatsoever would be an improvement, Counselor. I'm not going to allow you to violate his constitutional rights. You're not going to abuse him physically or degrade his dignity as a human being. Understand, Detective McLeod? Did you happen to see the girl your client operated on last year? On a slab in the morgue? Not much human left and very little dignity. My client was acquitted of that charge. He was guilty. Are you setting yourself above the courts of the land? There's a higher court. And do you presume to speak for it? I don't. God doesn't speak to me. If you've finished, I have a case to book. <laughs> you know, you're quite an anomaly, McLeod. College man, I understand. So? Nothing. It's going to be quite a pleasure to examine you in the witness stand. Anything to give you a thrill? Oh, we may have a thriller or two in store for you. Meaning? Meaning we've done some investigating, McLeod, and your interest in my client may not wholly be impersonal. Good day. What did he mean by that remark, Jim? Mm, just a fishing expedition. He's a shrewd mouthpiece. I've seen him work. Oh. You, uh, booking this kid you brought in? I don't know yet. 21st Detective Squad, Callahan. Oh, Sure. Jim, your wife. I'll take in the office. Arthur, you sit right there. Don't try running for it. Bullets are supersonic. You just about reached that door and suddenly you put on weight. Don't worry. I won't either way. Hello? Hello, darling. What did the doctor say? Yeah? Oh, good. Good. Uh, nothing organic. You sure? You sure now, Mary? How does he explain those palpitations? Psychosomatic. Hmm. How does he explain that? Yeah? <laughs> oh, Mary, you're wonderful. I love you. I'll call you later, Don. Yes, Don. I love you very much. <laughs> First squad detectives, Callahan. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, he's here now, Lieutenant. Okay. Hi, here, Brody. What do you got? Yeah, a couple of tough customers. Oh. Get in there, you two. Sit down. I quit jumping. I'll do more than that. Now sit down. Who are these two? Burglars. Patrolman Barnes caught him. I was right across the street when he hears him scream. Now they come running downstairs. He called him. The big skinny one put up a struggle. I was walking down the stairs minding my own business. See, the copper jumps on me and starts beating me up. All right, loudmouth, sit down. We'll come to you. Hey, where's my partner? Jim, hey, inside. His wife's on the phone. What's doing? Oh, one shoppy, one thief. The uh, good-looking young fellow over there is Jim Squeal. Listen. Charlie boy, I said sit Listen, down. Listen, you think I'm crazy to do a thing like a robbery? Any weapons? Come on, this one we found a load of 22. Hey, what's your name? Louis Zappa. Are you carrying this gun, this Jimmy? Yeah. You're a bad boy, Lewis. What's more, you're a bad thief. Don't you know a good thief never carries a load of pistol? It adds five years to your sentence. Hello, Lou. What do you got? Oh, hi, Jim. A couple of cats. Barnes dropped them. Oh, the big one looks familiar. Empty your pocket, string bean. Lou, you take a look. Yeah. Yeah, look at the rule of government certificates. How much you got there, Charlie? Fourteen hundred bucks. Don't you trust the banks? When you in stir last, Charlie? Me in jail? Never, I swear, on a stack of Bibles. What's your bean on? I ain't got none. You sure? On my mother's grave, I swear, I got no bean card. You just gave yourself away, Charlie. How do you know what a bean card is if you never had one? But... Friend him, Callahan. You'll find he's got a sheet as long as your arm. I swear to you, I get down on my knees to you. I get up, you ape. I can smell you, Charlie. You're a cat burglar, a real murderer. What about the kid over there, Jim? I'm getting to him right now. Uh, mind if I listen, Jim? Help yourself. Okay, son, on your feet. Yeah. What's your full name? Kindred. Arthur Kindred. Empty your pockets, Arthur. Okay. Sit down. What'd you do with the money? I told you. Tell me again. I spent it. All of it? Yes. I'm doing a hot spot, so I see you got matches from the store club. Some. Any money left? How far can you go with $400? The employer says it was 480 I guess he knows. Have you been arrested before? No. What's the pawn ticket for? 
textbooks. College man? I was. Graduate? No. What stops you? World War II the first time. Foolish question, foolish answer. How old are you? 27. What branch of service? Navy. Married? No. Now, what's his name in this card? Joy. Joy Carmichael. Nobody. Maybe I'd better give her a ring, huh? For what for? She doesn't know anything about this. You wouldn't lie to me, would you, Arthur? Why should I lie? I don't know. Why should you steal? It's because you're no good, huh, Arthur? The judge asked me, I'm going to throw the book at you. He's got the money? He doesn't know. Let me try. Sonny, you look like a nice boy. How'd you get into this mess? So what is this? You going to give me a lecture, too? Now, I don't get funny with any Sonny. I'll slide you right through the floor. Sit down. How'd you get into this mess, son? Uh, I don't know. You get trapped. Where's your money? Gone. Spent. Tell me why you did it. I'm sorry I can't. You're wasting your time, Lou. Here, yeah, there's a name on this card. Joy Carmichael. Phone her and get her down here. No. Right, take it easy, son. Now, please, don't drag her in Go ahead, it. Lou. Look, Sonny. You just sit there until I finish with this cat burger and we'll have another talk. And remember what I said about putting on weight. Okay, Lewis, while your partner's being printed, we'll have a little talk, huh? Go ahead. You're in trouble, Lewis. Bad trouble. Now, you help us, we'll help you. We'll ask the DA to give you a break. Now, tell us the truth. How many burglaries you committed? Be a man, you could drop face it. You know, Lewis, Charlie lets you carry the gun and the jimmy. You're the one that's going to burn. Ever think of that? Don't you see how he's crossed you? Anything out of this one? He'll talk. Did you call the girl? Not in. I, I got a kid's sister. Says she's coming down. Good. When are you in jail last, Lewis? Look, Lewis, we're going to fingerprint you. In 20 minutes, we'll know your whole record. Make it easy for yourself. How many burglaries? What did I get? Where were you? Elmira, I got out in March. How long are you in? Three and a half. What for? Burglary. Well, I give you seven and a half to ten if you cooperate. Otherwise, 15 to 20. What, uh, what do you want to know? How many burglaries? Nine or ten. That's better. Where's the stuff? I gave it all to Charlie. He was in on it then? Yeah. Did he sell it? Yeah. Where? Boston, I think. You think? Didn't he tell you? No. You're a bit of a schmo, ain't you, Lewis? Lewis is all right. He's cooperating. How much Charlie give you? Oh, uh, maybe 500. What? The stuff was worth 40 grand, Lewis. Charlie said it was mostly fake. Here's a list of the people who were robbed. See for yourself. Holy mackerel. Lewis? You've been robbed. Where's Charlie's flat, Lewis? 129th Street West. I know the number and I can take you there. Good. Callahan. Yes, Jim? Our boy here has decided to cooperate. Get somebody to take him back to his partner's flat. Probably loaded with stuff. Okay, Jim. Right on it. Yes, miss? What is it? Excuse me. I'm Susan Carmichael. I was told a friend of my sister's is being held here. What's his name? Arthur. Arthur Kindred. I was told to see a Detective McCloud. Oh, yeah. Jim, somebody here about your squeal. Okay. Uh, hello, miss. You Miss Carmichael? I'm Susan Carmichael. Contact your sister? No, I couldn't reach her. Is Arthur all right? He's in the office. How well do you know him? Very. We live next door to each other all our lives. Kind of a wild boy, isn't he? Arthur? No, he was always very serious. Did you give your sister any money? My sister earns three to four hundred a week. She's a successful model. What is this all about? Let me ask the question. Do you mind? Sorry? Arthur was in the Navy? Side here. He got a dishonorable discharge. What are you talking about? That's a question. You didn't punctuate. Correction. Did he? Arthur was cited four times. He got the silver star. Hear that, Lou? Mm-hmm. Detective Brody's boy was killed in the Navy. That's too bad. Arthur carried a sailor up three decks of a burning ship. He had two ships sunk under him floated around the Pacific Ocean for 17 hours with sharks all around him. When they picked him up, he was out of his head, trying to climb onto a concrete platform that wasn't there. He was in the hospital for weeks. Any more questions, Detective McCloud? Are you in love with your sister? My sister is one of the most beautiful girls in New York. A lot of men are in love with her. Your sister's boyfriend's in trouble, Miss Carmichael. Arthur, over here. Oh, when do we get... Susan. Jim, what happened? Did you have to drag children into this, McLeod? I'm not a child. Susie, go home. Don't get mixed up in this. Did you take money? Yes, from the man I worked for. Why? I wanted to. Now, please, Susie, beat it. You either shut up. I will not. Listen, you punk. Jim. What is it, Lou? Mind if I have a way with a boy? Shoot. 
Is it true? True? You carried a wounded sailor on your shoulders up three decks of a plane and ship? Yes. My boy was in the Navy, too. The Juno. You know her? He was a cruiser. She went down with all hands. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah he, he was my only boy. He's some you never get over. You, you keep waiting. Phone, doorbell. Sometimes I uh, hear a voice on the street. Or see a young fella on the side of his shoulders. Or, like you. A man is him. Maybe he was one of the lucky ones. Don't say that. Why not? Because uh, it wouldn't make sense, then. Lou, don't go soft on this kid. He's a common face. Is he, Jim? Yes. Better let me take over. I sent for his boss. Told him we caught the guy who stole his money. Jim, you're, you're working too fast, maybe? It's my case, Lou. Okay, only we always work together on everything, remember? I'll handle this one alone. Uh, Jim. What is it? Lieutenant just come in. Wants to see him in his office. Okay, right there. All right, Sonny, you stay right there. Can I talk to him? If you like. I'll be back in a few minutes. Oh, Jesus. That man, that McLeod, he's... He's like an insane man. All he wants to do is punish you. I can see it. Come in. Oh, hello, Jim. Callahan said you want to see me, Lieutenant. Sit down, Jim. I just ran into Kurt Schneider's attorney downstairs. He tells me Kurt is coming in. So he says. Been waiting a long time for this, haven't you, Jim? A long time. You have some uh, personal angle? No, why? Schneider's attorney hinted that you might have one. Special. Are you sure, Jim? I'm sure. What do you imply? Oh, nothing specific, just vague hints. You can write those on the air. Uh, now that he's coming in... Uh, just what sort of a case do you have against him? There's a girl, uh, Miss Harris, in the hospital. Critical. I called the DA's office, and I'm taking Schneider over to the hospital as soon as he comes in. Anything else? I've located a corroborating witness, uh, Gloria Hatch. She can identify Schneider as the man she assisted. Well, that sounds like a good case. It'll be perfect. When I get a signed statement from Schneider himself that he's been performing illegal operations. And how do you expect to get that? Persuasion. That's why I called you in. Jim, keep your mitts off him. Now, that's an order. Lieutenant, you ever seen that railroad flat where he operates? You see that kitchen table? Those bloodstained, dirty instruments? Now, listen, Jim, this is an impersonal business. Your moral indignation is giving me a pain in the neck. But you've got a messianic complex. You want to be judge and jury, too. Well, you can't do it. It says so in the book. Also, I don't like lawyers coming in here with photos that marks my squad lousy. I don't like it, I won't have it. You understand? Yes. Can't you say yes, sir? Without making it sound like an insult? Yes, sir. You think you're superior. That's your trouble. Well, for the record, I don't like you any more than you like me. But you've got a value here. And I need you on my squad. That's the reason you're not wearing a white badge again. You wouldn't want it back now, would when you? When I want your badge, I'll ask you. Good, because you can have it. With instructions. Okay. Now, Schneider's coming in. Get what you can out of him, but no roughhouse. You know the policy of this administration. I don't believe in carving criminals. Well, who tells you to? You do, the whole system does. McLeod, you talk like a maniac sometimes. May I? No! You've got your orders. Now, that's all. I was going to say, may I have the keys to the files, sir? Mm. Here. You've always got to have the last word, don't you? First Squad Detectives, Callahan. Uh-oh. Uh, send him in, Sammy, will you? Jim. Wow. Kurt Schneider's coming in with his mouthpiece. About time. Uh, give me five or six minutes for the lineup, will you, Callahan? Okay. Sammy, uh, ask a couple of the boys downstairs to get in the civvies for a lineup, will you? 
Uh, what's up, Jim? I got a witness coming in who can identify Kurt Schneider. Her name's Hatch. Keep her outside and we can get set up. Okay. Here comes your boy. Hello, Kurt. What do you want, Sims? I've advised my client of his legal rights. He'll answer no questions other than his name and address. Remember, Kurt, name and address, that's all. Is that understood? As you say, Counselor. When do you plan to book him? In a couple of hours. He's got a few others here ahead of him. I want to arrange his bail bond. You'll have to get Judge Crater to stand bail for him. Suppose you attend to your business and I'll attend to mine. I'll be glad to if you get out of here. Remember, Kurt. Name and address, that's all. Sit down, Kurt. How you been? So, so. Some coffee? You got enough? Sure, plenty. Looking well, Kurt? Could be better. How's the farm? All right. Wasn't there a drought in Jersey this year? I, uh, irrigate my farm. Does it really pay for itself? If you work it. How much can a man average a year? There is. Two thousand a good year. Hmm, it's pretty good, clear. Sometimes you lose a crop. How long you had the farm? Eleven years. And you average two thousand a year? About. So how'd you manage to accumulate fifty six thousand in the bank? How? Who says I have? I do, I check. Here are the statements. I got it honest. How? How? I don't have to tell you that. Oh, come on, Kurt. How? Make it easy for yourself. You're still running your little racket, aren't you? My name is Kurt Schneider. I live in Oakdale, New Jersey. That's all I have to answer. You operated on Miss Harris, didn't you? No, I did not. You identified your picture. Here's your statement. I want time. You think I'm crazy? We got you dead to rights. I'm not saying anymore. You better. I'm getting impatient. I'm standing on my constitutional rights. Hold your hat, boys. Here we go again. Look, Kurt. Why don't you cop a plea and help yourself? You've got nothing on me. No? Miss Harris is waiting to identify you at the hospital. And what you don't know is... We got a corroborating witness right outside. You're getting pale, Kurt. <laughs> How do you laugh, Max? A joke, McLeod. Big joke. And you're on the bottom. What does that mean? It means I know why you're out to get me. Why? You know why, McLeod. You know. Why, Kurt? This is your last chance to talk. My name is Kurt Schneider, and I live in Oakdale, New Jersey. <laughs> Callahan, let's have a line On your feet, Kurt. Get up there and stand with those other men. What's this all about? You'll find out. Just pick a spot. Stand anywhere. Okay. And no alibis later. Bring him a patch, will you, Lou? Okay, Jim. This is it, Kurt. You're going to get it now. We'll see, McLeod. We'll see. Miss Hatch? That's right. That's a nice piece of mink you're wearing. Rushing the season, aren't you? Oh, a little, maybe. New? Why, yes. It's nice of you to come down and help us. Don't mention it. What do I do? Well, just look over the seven men standing on the line up there. If you see the man who performed that operation on the Harris girl, touch him on the shoulder, okay? Okay. He ain't there. You haven't even looked. I did. You haven't looked. Not at me over there. I never saw any of these guys in my life. You identified a picture. What are you trying to do? Make me give a wrong identification? I never saw them. You're a liar. That's what I get for coming down here. You cops are all the same. Give you a lousy tin bag and you think you can push the world around. Listen, you little tramp. What did you call me? What did you call me? Hey, just a minute, Luke. Now listen, Miss Hatch. Jim. What? Private. Okay, what? The DA's office just phoned. The Harris girl died. When? A couple hours ago. Why would we inform? Search me. There goes the case. What about Gorgeous? He... Somebody reached her. I guess you just have to go through the motions now. The DA says you can't get an indictment on 10 air. Okay. Let me handle it. You still want me? You can go. You've earned your mink. I hope you enjoy it. Say, who do you think you are, anyway? Get out. Take a couple of drop dead pills. I'm get lost. I'm going to lawyer about this. Why do I do this to myself? Why am I wasting my life here? I could make more driving a hack. I like books. I like music. I have a wonderful, wonderful life. I should have my head examined. All this work, these hours. What for? Phony. The hatch curl was reached, huh, Jim? Democracy in action, Lou. 
A Rube Goldberg contraption. 3,000 wheels. It goes... <clears throat> yeah, that's why I like it. Got an aspirin? Yeah. Right here. Yeah, I was uh, talking to Judge Mendes last week. He just got on the bench last year, you know. 29 years, a lawyer. He figured this would be a cinch. He's lost 40 pounds. He's a nervous wreck. He said to me, Lou, I got to sentence a man to death tomorrow. Who am I to do that? It takes God to judge. Buck. Yeah, I'm quoting Judge Mendes. Then he's corrupt. Evil has a stench of its own, Lou. A child can spot it. I know. My own father was one of them. No good. Every day of my life, I saw him abuse and torment my mother. I saw him on no good say it is. Drive my mother right into a lunatic asylum with a criminal mind of his. Every time I look at one of these babies, I see my father's face. Jim, you still want the lineup? No. No, thanks, boys. Okay, Kurt. Step over here. Uh, take it easy, Jim. Sure, take it easy. Let him fill the morgue. Congratulations, Kurt. Harris girl just died. That's too bad. That's too bad. What do you got in place of a conscience, Kurt? I don't answer, I know. A lawyer. I ought to fall on you like the sword of God. The sword's got two edges. You might get hurt. Get in that office. What for? Get in there, Kurt. Okay. What are you going to do? I want a confession, Kurt. A signed statement. Look, McCloud. As soon as you book me, I'm out on bail. You don't frighten me, McCloud. You know why? Because I've got plenty on you, too. I know why you're so vindictive, and I'm telling you, watch your step. Because I've got friends, too, downtown, with pull. Lots of pull. Have you? What do you know? Ain't you the big shot? You got any friends with push like this? Shut it out. Don't the cloud. Please, just scum. Everybody else is going to let you go. The courts, the juries, the judges. Everybody except me. I'm just going to kick you right in that yellow belly. <laughs> Get up, Kurt. Get up. I can't. Something inside. Wrong. Is it? He hit me. Take it easy, Kurt. You'll be all right. Nick, Jackus, get an ambulance quick. Yes, what happened? Did he resist you? No. No. Why, you lunatic. Didn't I just get through warning you to lay off? He, he tried to kill me. Tammy Jacopetti. Same thing. She got him after me, too. Tammy Jacopetti. What? Tammy Jacopetti? Well, who's he? What about him? Well, try to tell me, Kurt. See? No. See? Uh, he's unconscious. Nick, wet some towels. Hurry up. Okay, McLeod. Who's Tammy Giacopetti? I have no idea. What happened? He got fresh. He begged for it, so I let him have it. Don't con me, Jim. That ain't all. What about Giacopetti? I know Giacopetti, Lieutenant. He's a policy man, a cheap racketeer. Find him. Bring him in. There's something fishy going on between you and this one, McLeod. And if you're holding out, so help me, I'll have your head served up on a plate. In a moment, Act Two of Detective Story, starring Wendell Corey. Act Two of the Best Plays production of Detective Story, starring Wendell Corey and James Westerfield. How dare you? How dare you take the law into your own hands? Who are you, McLeod, to constitute yourself a court of last appeal? Now, counsel... Go ahead, break me. You're worse than the criminals you represent. 21st Squad, Detective Callahan. The clothes you wear, your house in Westchester. They're all bought with blood. Shut up, both of you. Hello, Lieutenant Monahan. The hospital. How is he? Yeah. I see. Well, keep in touch with me. How is my client? So far, they've turned up nothing to warrant a felony charge, so you better cool off, Mr. Sims. Let him bring his blasted charge. It'll give me a chance to get his client on the stand and really tear his clothes off. Now, shut up and get out of here. That's an order. Step outside and wait for us. The 
kind of a maniac is he? Well, McLeod has the value here. He's honest and he's got no tin boxes. Uh, he's got another ankle. What do you mean? I can't discuss it. Who can? McLeod can. Maybe his wife. What? Skip it. No. You mentioned his wife. What do you mean by that? Find out for yourself. I got to get down to the hospital to see about my client. Okay, counselor. I'm going to find out for sure. Okay, okay. Now, take a look at this stuff we found in your apartment. You never found that stuff. Where'd you get it? What's the use of talking? You'd never believe me. Johnny, you see this? It's a blackjack. A persuader. Yeah, well, go ahead. Beat me. Beat me unconscious. Go ahead. Ah, now, you're too eager, Charlie. You know, some of them creeps like it. Gives them a thrill. Hey, look at that kiss around, Charlie. I'm a sucker for any right. I'll lay off. Hey, why don't you be professional, Charlie? Don't hang your head in shame. You want to be a burglar, so you're a burglar. Be a good one. Be proud of your chosen profession. Well, you're no bum, Charlie. You wear a hundred dollar suit. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Take off that suit, you Let's bum. Go. The owner's name is still inside. Jerome Armstrong. Did you say Armstrong? Yeah. That's an old squeal of mine, Brody. There was a rap connected with it. What do you say, Charlie? I don't know nothing. He's ignorant and he's proud of it. Okay, Charlie, sit down. Nick, you and Callahan get on the phone. Match this loot with the list and start calling the people who reported it stolen. Uh, excuse me, sir. Yeah? I'm looking for a Detective McLeod. My name is Pritchard. I understand you arrested an employee of mine, Arthur Kindred. Oh, you'll find McLeod in the squad room with your employee. Just walk right in. Oh, thank you. Uh, Charlie, I want to talk to you. Uh, excuse me. Oh, come in, Mr. Pritchard. Is this the boy? Yes. That's Arthur. Did you get my money back? I'm afraid not. You'll be in court tomorrow? I certainly will. We can count on you. When I make up my mind, I'm like iron. Mr. Pritchard, please. Who is this young woman? I'm an old friend of Arthur's. Well, what do you want? If I signed a promissory note for the money, would you drop the charge? Young lady, I've seen a thousand like this one. Now, take my advice. Oh, Jim. What is it, Lou? Uh, the lieutenant said to tell you he wants the complete file on the, the Cotsquart Square. Oh, for Pete's sake. Well, now, he says. Okay. Uh, keep an eye on this one, will you? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Mr. Pritchard. You can't send Arthur to jail. Young lady, once I saw a picture of Les Miserables at Dandy. This Jean Valjean, he steals a loaf of bread and goes to jail for 20 years. He was starving. My heart went out to him. But Arthur here wasn't starving. He went to cabarets with my money. Mr. Pritchard, uh, maybe maybe once a year we get somebody in here who steals because he's actually hungry. and We're all on his side. Of course. But why did Arthur steal I did it because I was hungry. What? Hungry. I'm sorry. It's hard to explain. I... I was separated from my girl, from Susan's sister, for five years, see? A very beautiful girl, see? But expensive, used to good things. To take her out to dinner would cost me a month's salary. Last Wednesday, she told me she was marrying somebody else. I decided to make a final grandstand play, shoot the works. I took your money and blew the works on her, and we had a wonderful time and said goodbye, and that's all. You admit you did wrong? Yes, yes, I admit it. You're willing to make restitution? If I can. I'll have the money tomorrow morning. Well, that's in its favor. How do you feel about it, Mr. Pritchard? Well... And the kid has a fine war record, too, remember? I don't want to press the charge if... The lieutenant says he never asked for those files. Oh, that's funny. I could swear he did. Oh, while you were out, Jim, I had a long talk with Mr. Pritchard here. But he's willing to drop the charges against this boy. Mr. Pritchard, I thought you were going to go through with this. I'd like to give him a chance. To steal from somebody else? Now, wait a minute, Jim. I advise Mr. Pritchard. But, Lord, don't you ever make a mistake? Yes. When I was new on this job, we brought in two boys. We were caught stealing a car. They looked like babies. They cried. I let them go. Two nights later, they held up a butcher in Harlem, shot him through the head. Now, Mr. Pritchard, I warn you, I'm not going to let this go. Uh, but if I decide not to bring trouble... Then I'm going to book him anyway and subpoena you into court. Well, I, I I, guess I'll have to leave it up to you, officer. I say prosecute. You know best. Mr. Pritchard... I'm sorry, young woman, but he had no right to rob me in the first place. That was a terrible thing to do. We won't take up any more of your time, Mr. Pritchard. 
In court tomorrow morning at 10. Uh, yes, yes. I'll, I'll be there. I'll walk out with you. Can I talk to Arthur for a minute? You talk away. Be your last chat for quite a while. Jake. Oh, Jake. Susie Doe. Do you want me to call Joy? No, I don't want Joy. You sure? I wouldn't know what to say to her now. For five years, I've been in love with a girl who doesn't exist. That's finished. Jiggs, why couldn't you have fallen in love with me? Oh, I've always loved you, Susie. I... You were always my baby. I've got news for you. I voted in the last election. <laughs> I love you. I'll wait for you. You... You wait for me. You're worth it. I'll be a common criminal, an ex-con. I don't care. Oh, Susie, Susie, darling. I'm there, sweetheart. I... Dr. Petty, Lieutenant. Bring him in. Is Mrs. McLeod here, yes? No, not yet. Wait downstairs for her and bring her in as soon as she arrives. And make sure that Jim doesn't see her come in. Do you get that? Yes, sir. Okay, Tammy. In there. Hello, Tammy. What's this all about, champ? Sit down, Tammy. What's on your mind, champ? You know a girl named Mary McLeod? Never heard of her. Her maiden name was Neil. Mary? What kind of trouble could she be in? Oh, it's just like a little information. That girl's 100%, champ. I wouldn't say one word against her. Uh, nothing you say here will be held against you. You understand? I give you my word. I won't hurt that girl. I don't want you to. She's only a witness. Uh, it's someone else. Okay, shoot. You married? <laughs> yeah. How long? Fifteen years. What a racket that is. You're an expert, aren't you? On what, marriage? Rackets. I'm a legitimate businessman. Take it up with my attorney. Look, Mr. Jacopelli, we've got a sheet on you. We know you're in up to your neck, but we don't bother out-of-state rackets. And what went on there ain't none of our business. Unless you make it so. Fish? Yeah, I could fish. You got any kids? No. I got five. You don't know what you're missing, Tammy. Well, don't rub salt then, I know. I got a wife as big as the Sahara Desert and twice as barren. I, I got nine brothers, four sisters, all on my payroll. None of them worth anything. They got kids, nephews, nieces, all over the lot. But a guy like me, I should become a nation. And I got no kids, not one. So don't rub salt in, huh? <laughs> Okay, I guess I know how you feel. Oh, you're a sharpshooter, champ. You hit me right on my spot. When did you know this girl? Seven years ago. You like her? I was crazy about her. She was my girl once. I'd have married her if I could have gotten divorced. What broke it up? Ah, she gave me the air. She got in trouble and that soured her on me. Dames, who can understand them? Uh, send her to a doctor? A doctor? Me? I wanted that kid. I told her, give me a son. Anything goes, anything she wants. The moon out of the sky, I get it for her. Dang, who can understand him? She goes off. It's the last I see of her. Next thing I know, I hear she went to some doctor. I went looking for her. If I'd have found her, I'd have broken her neck. I found him, though. I personally sent her to a hospital. What was his name? Ah, Dutchman. Schneider. Something. Kurt Schneider. That's what I wanted to know. Come on. Yeah, Lieutenant. Is Mrs. McLeod here yet? Downstairs. Send her in, will you? Okay. Oh, and uh, Callahan. Yes, sir. Have McLeod stand by. I'll want to see him later, too. Come in, Mrs. McLeod. Hello, Mary. Oh. Hello, Tim. How are you? 
pretty good. Mrs. McLeod, uh, Tammy told me why your husband is after Kurt Schneider. Oh, well, Jim never knew about that. Schneider's lawyer thinks he did. No, he never knew. Careful now, weigh your words. Any minute that phone will ring. If Schneider is critically hurt, this case goes to homicide. Schneider's hurt? Your husband beat him. Oh, but, but he didn't know, I swear, he didn't know. That's something I have to find out for myself. Send in McLeod. Now, don't either of you say a word until I talk. You wanted it. Well, Mary, what are you doing here? What's this, Lieutenant? What's my wife doing here? I sent for her. Why? This is Tammy Giacopetti. Hi, champ. What's this about, Lieutenant? Snyder! Why did you lie to me, Jim? I never lied Lieutenant, to you. Lieutenant, may I... May I please? Yeah, go ahead. Jim, the lieutenant won't believe that you know nothing about this. I tried to about tell him. About what, Mary? Dr. Schneider. What's he got to do with you? Jim, this man you struck with Dr. Schneider. Don't keep saying that, Mary. He's no doctor. Not a... I thought he was. I... I had occasion to see him once. What? It was a long time ago, Jim. Lieutenant, I told you he didn't know anything what? about it. What's this hoodlum here got to do with it? Well, Tammy and I, we... We were going together. I see. It was long before I met you. Okay, diagrams aren't necessary. I know how you feel, champ. I beat up Schneider myself when I found out why I even... Shut up! I don't have to take that from you, champ. Touch me again, I'll tear your arm out of the... Cut that out, McLeod! One second, I'll flood you myself. You mind if I talk to my wife alone? Come on, Tammy. Let's go. Sure. So long, champ. Goodbye, Mary. Good luck. I'm terribly sorry, Jim. Please forgive me. Is this not a badly hurt? He's only acting. You sure? Yeah. Oh, thank God for that. My immaculate wife. I never said I was. You never said you weren't. Why didn't you tell me? I loved you. I was afraid of losing you. How long did you go with him? A few months. How many? It's about four. Four isn't a few. No, I suppose not. You give you money? No. You give you presents? Yes, you give you some presents, of course. Expensive ones? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I don't know. What difference does it make? This difference. I just as soon Snyder died. I just as soon go to jail for 20 years and find out this way that my wife was... Don't a... say that, Jim. I didn't invent the word. I don't care what anybody says. I only care about you, Jim, and it's not true. You know it's not true. I thought I knew you. I thought you were everything good and pure. I'm with a pig like that. Jim, don't judge me. Try and understand. Right and wrong aren't always as simple as they seem to you. I was alone. I was big, city, lonely. This man paid me a lot of attention. I was flattered. I, I thought he was romantic and glamorous. I, I thought I was in love with him. You're trying to justify yourself in those terms? Oh, no, not justify. Explain. I was wrong. I know it. I discovered that for myself. When? Just now? Oh, Jim, I'm trying to make my life everything you want it to be. If I could make my past life over, I'd do that too gladly, but I can't. I made a mistake, I admit it, and I paid for it plenty. Isn't that enough? Jim, please understand. What's it understand? You kissed him. He held you in his arms. He went to Snyder. Uh, you, everything I hate, everything, even murder. What's the left to understand? All right, Jim, I'll go. First detective, Callahan. Take it fast, Callahan. I need the What? Just a minute, Jim. Yeah? A jumper. 53rd Street. 53rd, what name? Uh huh. Yeah? Uh huh. What name? Jim, please. No, 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 Sam. Go ahead. 
Yeah. Okay. A jumper? A woman. Killed? 16th floor. What name? What's wrong with you? Last couple of hours, you've been like crazy. What name? McFadden, an old lady. Why? It's my street, 53. You, uh... You all right, Jim? I'm all right. Hey, Jim, guess what? We just got the sheet on Charlie here. Eight arrests, five assaults, three rapes, three jail sentences. Hey, this bum's a four-time loser. I could smell it. You better watch him. He'll kill now he knows you're home. Oh, he'll be a good boy, won't you, Charlie? I swear on my mother's grave, I didn't know anything about it. Sure, sure. Now, you just sit down right there before I club you. I keep an eye on him, Callahan. I want you to book the kindred kid. Callahan, will you print him for me? Okay, Jim. Uh, Jim. Yeah? I, I, I want to talk to you. Let's go on the lieutenant's office. What about? Uh, come on. Okay. Well? Jim, Jim, I, I've been your partner for 13 years. I ever asked you for a favor? What is it, Lou? Hurry up. I got a headache. That kid outside, that, that Arthur Kindred. I want you to give him a break. You know better. I can't adjudicate the case. What do you think you're doing? What makes him so special? Well, he... Well, he reminds me of my boy. How can you compare? Mike was a hero. Why? Right. Because he got killed? Listen, Jim, there are thousands like this kid. We don't even understand him, but we've got to help him. I, I didn't understand Mike until it was too late. How about it? I can't, I can't do it. Louder, please. I don't seem to hear so good out of this ear. What do you mean you can't drop it? The complainant left it up to you. Be logical. Logic. Be logic the life out of a thing. Heart. The whole world's crying for a little heart. No, no dice. Jim, what do you got in your chest? A stone? Lou, lay off, will you? Can't you see I'm drowning in my own juices? Jim, what is it? Mary. She went to Kirchner. She and Jack are back. Oh, boy. Years ago. It's true. True? Are you crazy? True. Jim, to be a fool, pick up that phone, call her. I can't. Jim, you, you remember what you were like before you met Mary? You're like a stick, thin, dried up, lonely, cold. Remember? Yeah. Uh, she gave you some tenderness and warmth. Come on, the first time. You... I know, Lou, I know. Pick up that phone, Jim, and call her. Call her before it's too late. Lou, I... I don't know. I... Yes. Excuse me, Jim. I'm leaving. I thought I'd come up and tell you. You have the key. Come in, sir. Excuse me. I got a case to finish. Shut the door, Lou. My taxi's waiting. Send it away. No, my things are in it. Now, let's not drag it out, Jim. Mary, we can work this out. I've been thinking about it. Have you? It's possible. No, I I don't think so, Jim. And I'm not sure I want to. Wait a minute. Wait one minute. I don't get this. What are you so bitter about? Who's to blame for tonight? You put me in a cement mixer and now you're acting as if I were the... Tramp. I don't say that. I didn't invent the word again. I wasn't myself. You never more yourself. I'm sorry, Mary. Oh, it's all right. I'm beyond feeling. I'm nice and numb. You're married to me. You can't just walk out. Marriage is a sacrament, Mary. You don't dissolve it like that. I know the way your mind works. Never lets go. The rest of our days will be living with this. If you won't be saying it, you'll be thinking. No good. It won't work. Why don't you ever tell me? If you'd come to me once. Just once. What good would it have done? Would you have understood? Would you have been able to forgive me? Wasn't I entitled to know? Yes, yes. Well, why didn't you tell me? I cannot go out with this again and again and again. I refuse to. If I didn't love you and need you so, it'd be so Simple. Simple. You go home now and wait for more. No, that won't help us. Now, please, I'm so tired. Let me go now, Jim. To what? What do you go to? You who turn on every light in the house when I'm not Let there. Let me go, Jim. You who can't fall asleep unless my arm's around you. Where do you go? Now, the taxi's waiting. Please, Jim, let me go. You go without a tear? Oh, I wouldn't say that. One or two, perhaps. I haven't got many left. You'll find them on the pillow. Mary, you just... Don't stop loving someone. Who do you think you're kidding? No one. Least of all myself. Mary, 
love you. Well, then, help me. I'm trying to be a human being. I'm trying to bundle myself together. It took every bit of strength to go this far. Help me, dear. It's no use, sweetheart. It's no use. I couldn't go home if you weren't waiting for me with the radio going and the smell of coffee on the stove. I'd blow off my brains. I would, Mary, if I went home to an empty flat. I, I wouldn't dare take my gun with me. Now, now powder your nose and put on some more. Jim, there's a mouthpiece out here to see you. Okay. I better go home. Stay. The taxi bill's going to break it. I'll let it. I'll be right back. Yes, Councilman? I came here to tell you my client is better. He was acting. And to warn you, you're lucky you're not facing a murder charge right now. I could always get you to defend me. Yes, you probably could. I don't presume to judge a client before he's had a trial. I know the theory, Councilman. If you're so high-minded, how come you buy witnesses and perjured testimony? Look, McLeod, if you're so set on hanging Kurt Snyder and you need a corroborating witness, why not ask Mrs. McLeod? Good day, detective. Matter, dear? You spoke to Kurt's lawyer. <laughs> this has been our black day. Yeah. I'm sorry, darling. And yet, in a way, I'm glad it's out in the open. This has been hanging over my head for so long, I've had such a terrible feeling of guilt all the time. All right, all right. I needed help, and there was nobody. How long was that for I met you, Mary? Two years. Who'd you go with then? No one. How many others were there, Mary? Others. How many other men? None. What's the matter with you, Jim? Wait a minute. No, minute. what's the matter with you? I'd give everything I own to be able to take out my brain and wash away the dirty pictures you put there tonight. Yes. Oh, I see. I see. Yes, that would be convenient if we could. But when you wash away what I may have put there, you'll find you've a rotten spot in your brain, Jim. It's growing, I know. I've watched it. Mary, that's enough. No, let's have the truth. I could never find it in my heart to acknowledge one tiny flaw in you because I loved you so. And God help me, I still do. But let's have the truth for once, wherever it may lead. If you think you're on the side of the angels, you're not. You haven't even one drop of ordinary human forgiveness in your own nature. You're everything you've always said you hated in your own father. I'm not going to let you wander off in the streets this way. I'm going to take you home myself. What for to kill me the way your father killed your mother? There's the key. Mary! Don't touch me, Jim. I'm strong enough now. I can leave you. Where? Far away. When will I see you? Never. Goodbye. Mary! Mary! boy, down to the tomb to give you something else to think about. Okay, Charlie, on your feet. This is it. I didn't do nothing. Sure, I know. Come on, stand up. Okay, copper. I'll stand up. But before I go... Yeah? This! Lula look out. He's got your gun. Callahan! Okay, drop it. Drop it or this copper gets it. Drop it, Callahan. He's a four-time loser. He'll kill Lou. That's better. Rock in jail for the rest of my life? Uh, I take five or six new coppers with me first. He can't get by the outside. Shut up! One word, one move, anybody. Oh. What are you laughing at, copper? I was wondering when you'd get around. I was shot. Shut up! Sit down. Give me the gun, Charlie. Don't come closer, copper. I said give me the gun. Copper! I'm 
coming, Charlie. One more step. The guns. Jim, look out. Okay. Grab him. Okay, okay. He's out. Jim. Give me a you right back. Like me. Like me, Jim, Lou. Oh, Mary. Well, what happened? Charlie shot Jim. Hello. Can Hello, communications. Lou. Get an ambulance, quick. Never mind the ambulance. The priest, Jim. Give me a drink. With a belly wound? What difference it make? Look at him. Don't whisper, Lou. I can hear you. Lou? Find. Find Mary? Let's go, Jim. I will. I will, Jim. Lou? Yeah, baby. The prince. Arthur's Prince. Yeah? Damn. Uh, no case. Find the true. Lieutenant. The name, Father. Son. Holy Ghost. Did you call the priest? Oh, my God. I'm hardly sorry for having offended me. I detest all my sins because I tried to lose. I firmly resolve, with the help of thy grace, to confess my sins and to do penance and to amend my life. Amen. Okay, Isaac, go on home. Don't make a monkey out of me. Don't make a monkey out of me. I won't, don't worry. Hello, Communications Thank Bureau. You. Don't mention it. Notify the commissioner, the DA, the homicide squad. 21st Precinct Detective shot. Killed. Name, James McLeod. Married. Wife, Mary. Just heard the best plays production of Detective Story, starring Wendell Corey. And here once more is your host, drama critic John Chapman. What a wind-up, and what a play. As an old police reporter, I know that this one has been real. And you must, too, even if you never were police reporters. Because we have had a vivid performance by Mr. Corey, Mr. Westerfield, and their fellow players. Next week, we shall again concern ourselves with melodrama, but melodrama of a more fanciful sort. The title is Ladies in Retirement, and our actresses will be Carmen Matthews, Evelyn Varden, and Mildred Natwick. Quite a cast, I might add. This is Chapman saying goodbye until next week. Detective Story was transcribed and adapted for radio by George Lesser. Heard in the cast were Charmé Allen as Mrs. Farragut, William Lally as Sims, Matt Crawley as Callahan, Peter Capell as Kurt, Raleigh Bester as Miss Hatch, Ted Osborne as Pritchett, Elspeth Eric as Mary, Mandel Kramer as Dacus, John McGovern as the Lieutenant, Elaine Ross as Susan, Nat Poland as Charlie, and Leon Janney as Arthur. Recreating their original Broadway roles were Alexander Scorby as Tommy and James Westerfield as Brody. Best Plays is an NBC production supervised by William Welch and directed by Edward King. Your announcer is Fred Collins. Tonight, listen to Confession on NBC.